in state as well as out of state. And uh, over to our uh, media friends, uh, we have here represented uh, the NRI Pulse and Cover, which are two uh, very reputed uh, publications that bring us news of events uh, among the Indian diaspora here in Atlanta. We also are expecting um, Trevor Williams, who's the managing editor of Global Atlanta. He's probably caught in traffic. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Atlanta afternoon, yeah. Friday afternoon, which is our break. So <laughs> uh, hopefully he'll be able to join us. So uh, a few words about uh, the Georgia Indo-American Chamber of Commerce. We are a business chamber. We've been around for about 25 years, since 1999. And um, our, our main goal and mission is to promote business and opportunities between India and the state of Georgia. So um, in fact, it's so interesting. Uh, um, and this is, as you know, this is the sixth uh, Atlanta Indian Film Festival. And uh, we have grown uh, strength to strength every year. We have just got better and better. Uh, recalling 2016, I had vivid images of the Yashar studio yes. where we went and took pictures in Shah Rukh Khan's room yeah, and, and it was like pretty exciting actually. <laughs> so you met Shah Rukh Khan? Yeah, it's so cool. yeah, it's it's off. Right, it, was, it was pretty nice and fun, I mean just in the sun. Um, yeah, besides that, I think, so we have grown strength to strength. We, were, we have been collaborating, earlier we used to collaborate with the other film festivals because we did not have the technical know-how. None of us at the chamber are movie makers. And uh, so I think last year I was having dinner with, I think, uh, with Asad. You know, Asad Paruki, he's a SCAD professor of filmmaking. And I was having dinner, he was there, and Karthik, uh, he was also, 2022, he uh, debuted his uh, feature film with the Atlanta Indian Film Festival, first ever. He spent his own money to create that movie, feature film. It was pretty, it was pretty risk-taking, risk but you know, so they have, uh, we, have all, we have these uh, filmmakers who are friends of the chamber. So I was having uh, dinner with them, and I was like, what do we do? Because, you know, obviously when you're collaborating with others, there are always issues, and I think that's when uh, Asad was like, why can't we go independent? It was like, I was like, that's not easy. He was like, no, just try this. And we just took that risk, not knowing, you know, one of those people, you just go, the Mavericks, you just go, and it just works out. So it was one of those things. And we had a fantastic first year, uh, first year of... Uh, uh, next is, uh, how's the permits? Permits usually go. If it's in India, I can just go ask the local police station and say that, you know, I can do something under the table and then bring it back. <laughs> 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 yeah, probably not. So, um, they they, I mean, very, very informal <laughs> way, I, I've, been, I've seen uh, part of a couple of uh, Facebook groups. Yeah. There are a lot of independent uh, artists and filmmakers put together. So somebody is having a shoot this weekend, they post it, right? and yeah. they list out the uh, requirement. Mm. And they also li sometimes li list out the pay True. as well. Yeah. So people connect there, yeah. and even their person, like you say permits, right? Mm -hmm. Which is very important, uh, they, I can connect. So there are people who there who are very experienced with that, because they help that too. So that's actually helping very really well with some independent So is there thing. any kind of like a framework or a design? Is it like uh, a POC maybe I should contact someone to get something done? But the word I see in uh, LA is that there's something called film LA. I just have to oh. figure out a radius, put a number, shape. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. It's just part of the independent filmmaking process, right? Yeah. But I guess having resources in place to be able to to be able to look up and be like, okay, this, these are the steps I need to take. That would be helpful. Those don't exist yet. Uh, I mean, kudos to him. He actually just went around making phone calls. So he got the right person. And uh, we were able to get in touch with a representative from the city of Lawrenceville, and they helped us with this. But it did take some time for us to get to that point. Uh, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm from um, San Francisco. I'm a techie. I'm also um, an amateur filmmaker. Um, so I wrote, um, produced, directed, and did the lead role in my debut movie called Blue Sunshine. So Blue Sunshine is a very unique movie. So it's also part of who you are in right. many sense. So please do tell us about that. So um, I'm a transgender woman. Um, and uh, I transitioned when I was um, with Amazon in Seattle in 2016. Um, to be honest, it was it was a cakewalk <laughs> because I was in a very um, supportive atmosphere at Amazon, 
and all the right policies to integrate somebody like me transitioning on the job and I had very supportive friends and Seattle is like a very progressive city and you know um, my teammates and friends were very welcoming, very accommodating of me. But um, I realized that it's not how it would be for somebody who transitioned in India. So I wanted to take some events from my personal life, but I want to put it in the Indian context. Um, so the movie is about um, a person, a high school teacher, wanting to transition from male to female uh, while working for a conservative school in a small town, um, which is actually the town that I come from. <laughs> from this town called Kolachi, which is in um, Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu? In Tamil Nadu. Um, <laughs> Actually, um, in real life, my, um, my mom would be like, as long as you're happy, I'm fine. That is how they are, right? Um, but then, um, that is not how most um, people try to get happy. So I would say, when I say in my context, I want to make it a little bit more romantic. So in the movie, um, the parents are like, you know, they love their child because it's an only child. But still, they have lots of problems because they always feel what the order you make to take, um, how to make it react, how things go, etc. So, uh, for introducing the intervention, um, I made the movie slightly different from my own real life. Um, but yeah. yeah. Hello, my name is Banu. நீ எப்பவுமே விளங்க மாட்டேன்னு தெரியும் ஆனா இவ்வளவு பெரிய அசிங்கத்தை எழுத்து விடுவான்னு தெரியலடா சாமி வீட்டுல சொல்லலையா சொன்னா புரிஞ்சுப்பாங்கன்னு எனக்கு தோணல என்ன பண்ண போற a software engineer uh, who who revives his father's hand on me for a promise uh, he made for his mother who stuck in a bonder labor so what uh, did you have any personal experiences or was this a story that you came up with no this is this is something that i wanted to make for uh, since like last eight years or something so the it started off when me and my cousins we were traveling to kanjur and to shop sarees this started around eight years ago when i just finished my um, school uh, i was traveling with my sisters to kanjipuram mm -hmm. where we shot in sarees my sisters are very well um, sari enthusiastic persons so they were talking with the weavers and everything and the weavers told that they don't want to pass this craft to the next generation because they don't want to see them struggling like them and uh, you know they how much they make for the entire month that is the starting package of an it employee so they want their uh, kids to become an it employee or something Uh, in the future and have a really good lifestyle so this story is stuck in my mind of why they're not just not passing the craft if not they're not pursuing it's a different thing they're not even ready to pass even the kids are not ready to take take it anymore and then a lot of weaves has lost in tradition and become extinct so so i was i was in la i moved to la uh, was uh, studying film out there and then one day i went to a showman of shopping mall and then i saw in a store called women co-op society So they were sell, uh, they were selling uh, ikat block bread from Shri Kala Hasti for a much larger price. So I thought this is an opportunity for uh, we were to actually become an entrepreneur. So and that's how um, I gave uh, that's how I gave my skills and everything uh, to become a filmmaker. And I thought like this is the right story at this point of time to actually see. And, uh, I hope you keep this weave of your culture alive. It, it is Pamela G's brainchild completely. I'm really just her helper, honestly. Um, 
but it's it's just each year it seems to grow. So like she mentioned in the press meet, uh, it started off with a few films in 2022, then it grew to about 50 last year, and now it's much more than that. Uh, and it seems to grow just because I think the quality of the festival and the quality of the films seems to improve. Um, and we've added so many more components like workshops. I have the good fortune to uh, run a screenwriting uh, film directing workshop last year, which I thought was a, was a decent success. We also had an actor's workshop. Um, and which what fun was featured in? Yeah, my web series uh, played last year, uh, six short episodes. And so I'm eternally grateful that um, AIFF played all six episodes. And you look at the film festival, uh, especially this yeah. year. What is it uh, that you take away from this year's film festival? I mean, just I think any film festival, and including this one, is just a celebration of the films, and it's about the filmmakers and just the independent voices. And I'm so glad that some of them made it here and that they made their point heard, which I think is a good thing. Where we don't have the money, but we still want to tell the stories now. And you have do international it. submissions as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. International submissions, um, and then now with the Film Bazaar, AIFF is also pushing for you know, South Asian American submissions and, and South Asian American films, films shot here with, within the diaspora, which I think is a great, great festival. Uh, this is the sixth year that the Atlanta Film Festival is being screened in Atlanta. And we are very excited to bring you some fantastic movies. Um, as the caliber of movies and the movie makers get better, the movies that, are, that we present are also much better. So I'm very excited. Hope you can come and join us. So Pamela, tell us what is unique. I know you have to go, so I'll let you go soon. Uh, tell us what is the most unique thing about the festival this year? Uh, instead, so, I think our focus is really to support the young filmmakers, the young movie makers. We want to see them as stars, and they are genuinely the stars of our evening. Of so yes, exactly. So the gala that we have is we present the young directors, and they are the star of the evening. Uh, in addition, you know, we provide cash awards, which is very unique in other film festivals, the awardees, whoever wins the first movie, the best movies, short, uh, short feature, we provide them with uh, cash awards, and um, we support them uh, by giving them a travel allowance and a free stay in Atlanta while they're there from, uh, for the film festival, and this is, of course, uh, the beneficiaries are the sponsors, the Atlanta uh, organizations, companies who are so generous to support our Atlanta Indian Film Festival. So we genuinely thank the community for supporting the festival. Thank you, What prompted TIACC uh, to pick up a film festival? Yeah, so a lot of people wonder why a trade organization or a chamber of commerce is interested in promoting film festival. This is our sixth year of doing it. And the reason, the mission of GICC is to promote trade between Georgia and India. Given the fact that Georgia is a big hub for making films, uh, we would like for even the independent films to get them exposed to the facilities and the incentives that Georgia has to offer so they can think about uh, creating the stories here. So this year when you went on the tour, you said uh, the film studios actually offered something for the directors who traveled with you. Yeah, so absolutely. So one of our sponsors, uh, Three Ring Studios, has offered 10 weeks of free stage sound time. And that's a great incentive for someone who has a script ready to kind of film, you know, take that offer up and make a film or a short film or could be even do a feature film in that short time.
of 6th Atlanta India Film Festival. What a great event. Happy to meet a lot of you today evening. So uh, I'd like to convey congratulations for GAACC for continuing it for 6th year. It's a great to bring India and United States through the power of cinema. So, by, that's what uh, Jay said, that why uh, Chambers of Commerce has to do a film festival. So, yeah, they already answered, I just read something thinking that what will be the ideal. So, film industry is also one of the component of a commercial thing. So, I don't, I'll not bore you with a lot of uh, things. Uh, everybody knows that Indian cinema is Bollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood, and uh, we produce movies in 20 different languages in India. And the Indian movie industry is expected around 2 to 2 and 2.5 billion dollars every year. Every year, Indian movies, around 1,800 to 2,000 movies are produced and uh, distributed within the world, all over the world. So, millions of labor are involved in it. So, it's a big, big industry. It's, it's, it's a great industry. So, it brings in a lot of value. And none other than that, why should we do it in Atlanta? You all know it's Hollywood of South. So, all the movie, movie making, all the uh, animation related technology, everything is moving into Atlanta. It's a great place to have collaboration and movie industry between India and USA. Very happy to note that Jaja Indian Chambers of Commerce is taking this lead and promoting Indian cinema. I wish all of you to be having an opportunity to watch the movie.